after every show, they sort of went through it. First thing they do, that wasn't good. They always pick out the bad things first. I mean, the dressing room, sometimes after a Queen show, shouting at each other about how Freddie forgot words, Brian forgot how to play, what happened to you, Roger, on the drums? Where did they go? And I mean, mirrors get smashed, all of that sort of thing. What allowed him to be this superstar when he was on stage is that he knew that everyone was there to see him. As far as Freddie was concerned, when he went onto the stage, he had to make every person in that audience feel as though he was performing just for them. He had to have every pair of eyes on him. And that's that's what he used to do. That's what he could do. That's what he was brilliant at. At Live Aid, there was, I don't know, like 75,000 people in the audience and like a billion people watching around the world and they were waiting on his every single word like how did he make it feel like he was performing just for you because his eyes were never still if you have a look at shows you have a look at videos he was looking all over he was everywhere so that everybody could have the feeling he was searching for them for any rock musician i've known freddie was the greatest performer he didn't go on to stage just to sing the songs get through the hour hour and a half two hour show go off and go to bed he went out there to entertain the crowd you know, look at one of his songs, Let Me Entertain You. That was what he was all about. And so he felt he was able to put that through the music, using the music to actually perform on stage, to be part of this amazing show. You know, for Freddie, it wasn't just another gig. I mean, Queen never, with these four people in their denims and t-shirt, going on, singing the songs and going off again. Right from the very start, when Freddie was with them, he was performing. He gave a performance. He gave a show. And that's why the lighting was always so much bigger and better. As soon as they started using a keyboard player, you noticed that Freddie hardly ever touched the piano, but he was on every square inch of the stage. So many performers will use staying within their two square meters of stage space. I mean, they'd give a great performance, they'll give a great show, but within their two square meters. But it didn't matter how big the stage was for Freddie, he would be there, he would be there. Wherever you looked, Freddie was there. You couldn't do anything but have your eyes on him all the time. So the eyes were following him as much as he was following the people. You spent time with some of the greatest artists in history. Like obviously there's Freddie, but you spend time in the studio with David Bowie, Michael Jackson. Are there any similarities, consistent traits you've noticed amongst these high level performers? Like, is there anything that they all have in common? I think this goes for anybody who goes onto stage. They want the audience to leave content. They want the audience to leave having had an amazing time. And that goes from opera, for ballet, for rock. You don't want the audience to leave, just sort of thinking, oh, well, hmm, that was a nice waste of time. Let's see what happens tomorrow. No, you've, they've got to leave any sort of performance thinking, wow, what an amazing night I've just had. There has to be a level of satisfaction. There can't be an empty feeling leaving the venue. No, 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 no. Not for the audience and certainly not for the artist. The uh, After a show, and this was from the Royal Ballet days, from opera days, from, through Freddie days. The, each person was their own hardest critic. I mean, the dressing room, sometimes after a Queen show, I mean, there were only two people allowed in the dressing room for about half an hour after a Queen show. And that was, at that time, Paul Prenter and myself. And we were just there getting the wet clothes off of the band. The band themselves could then get everything out shouting at each other about how Freddie forgot words, Brian forgot how to play, what happened to you, Roger, on the drums? Where did they go? And I mean, mirrors get smashed, all of that sort of thing. But then after half an hour, that's all finished, done with, and life goes on. It did not happen that often. But after every show, they sort of went through it. Most of the time, they were content. They were, con they were happy with the end result. But again, as I say, through with the Royal Ballet at the Royal Opera, that people came off the stage and the first thing they do, I did that wrong, that wasn't good. 
rather than saying, oh, that was amazing. They always pick out the bad things first and then can go back and think, yeah, but overall, I think that was actually, that was amazing. That was wonderful. Is there any, when they have those rows after a show, is there any like tangible takeaways they know they need to take to prove on the next show? Or is it more so just to have like a level of catharsis? Like they just need to yell at each other to get it out. I think it was catharsis more than anything else. It's like anything, anytime someone is full of adrenaline, you just have to get it out. This is why nobody would ever, nobody went to bed straight after a show. You just had to go out to get rid of the adrenaline. You could not have gone to bed. You could not have gone to sleep. Even if you had gone straight back to the hotel, it would have been impossible. This is the thing artists have to deal with. This is their life. So many will always complain about being on stage, but if they're not on a stage for a month or something, then they're crawling up the walls. They need to get back onto the stage. It's their their second home. 